for this week's Challenge Wednesday, we have our patient Kelly. And Kelly presents with plantar flexor spasticity of a 2 plus modified Ashworth scale that's on the modified Ashworth scale. The patient is active and demonstrates fair plus medial lateral ankle stability. The therapist would like to provide the most effective and least restrictive orthotic to assist with gait. Which of the following orthotics is the most appropriate for this patient? So we have A, solid ankle foot orthotic or a SAFO. B, ground reaction AFO, also known as a GRAFO. C, posterior leaf spring AFO. And then D is an articulated AFO with a posterior stop. All right. So we got our question here. Again, it's AFOs that we're really looking at. Let's go ahead and start breaking this down. So Kelly presents with plantar flexor spasticity. All right. So that's pre pretty straightforward, y'all. Right. But I love this question because it does give us a little bit more information about how severe this is. It's based upon the modified Ashworth scale. It says it's at a two plus. Now, it's really important that we understand what the modified Ashworth scale is. And it's a simple measure that we use to test for spasticity and determine how severe the spasticity is. All right. And we do that through doing a quick stretch, which allows us to grade a person from zero to four on this modified Ashworth scale. Now, my question to you. As we, we chill out for a second, my question to you is a two plus. What does that mean? Because in order for you to get this question right with confidence, you have to know what a two plus on the modified Ashworth scale is. Let's get that. Let's get that uh, situated first. All right. So a two plus means that the patient has marked increase in muscle tone through most of the range of motion. However, the affected extremity is still moved pretty easily. That's what it means. So we have marked increase in tone through the uh, through the majority of the range of motion however the affected part is still moved relatively easily all right so that's important now let's move down the line it says the patient is active and demonstrates fair plus medial lateral ankle stability what's that telling us okay the patient has decent control of the ankle now the therapist would like to provide the most effective and least restrictive orthotic to assist with gait. All right, we'll come back to that part because that's important. All right, the question stem though, the last uh, sentence of this question says, which of the following orthotics is the most appropriate for this patient? Now, let me tell y'all, before we go down and start dissecting these answer choices and freaking crush this question, as always, I need to say this. In order for you to get AFO questions right, you have to understand this, this strategy, this term that I use is called uh, KOF or knowledge of function. If you want to destroy AFO questions, you have to know the knowledge of the function. You have to have the knowledge of the function of each AFO. That is going to allow you to crush these and eliminate answers out really easily. All right. Again, let's look at our answer choices. We got A, which was the SAFO. B is the GRAFO. C is the posterior leaf spring. And D is this uh, articulated AFO, also known as the hinged AFO with a posterior stop. All right, here's the deal. With A, the SAFO, the one thing I do know about this particular orthotic is that it's kind of like a block in a sense. It, it protects the ankle from, you know, a lot of instability issues. It locks the ankle up so it doesn't move really in any direction. It's really the most restrictive type of AFO out of these four. But we see up top that our patient does have fair plus medial lateral ankle stability. And so to put them in a SAFO, I mean, you could do it. But we still see that the patient is active, though. They want to be moving around. We don't know what type of moving around, but we know that the patient is active. So I don't want to put them in an AFO that's going to stop all their motion, especially when they already have fair plus medial lateral ankle stability. I think that that's overkill. Now, the one thing I will say to you that's really important, I told you I would come back to this. It says the therapist would like to provide the most effective and the least restrictive orthotic to assist with gait. I can tell you right now, the most restrictive is this SAFO. And so I already don't like that as an answer choice for that purpose alone. 
all right, or for that reason. So let's go ahead. We'll put an X next to that one. Let's continue on down. Maybe it's the right answer. I don't know. Let's continue on down the line and see what we got. Next one is known as the ground reaction AFO or the GRAFO. I'll tell you this. The GRAFO is typically used for your patients who have buckling at the knee due to the fact that they can't control their dorsiflexion. All right, and if you uh, understand how biomechanics work, you know that if a patient dorsiflexes their ankle in a closed chain position, that creates knee flexion. All right, and so for this patient right now, do they really have a problem with going into too much dorsiflexion? No, they have plantar flexor spasticity. That's not their issue right now. If anything, they're going into more plantar flexion, not more dorsiflexion. Plus, it says nothing in here about anything dealing with the knee or the fact that they have knee buckling. Or it doesn't say anything about that. So I can already start to eliminate B because it just doesn't address our patient's impairments. It really doesn't address what our patient's presenting to us with. All right, ground reaction AFO is not the best of answers right now. Let's look at C. C says posterior leaf spring AFO. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with the posterior leaf spring, it's a uh, type of orthotic that we can use to help patients with drop foot. All right, it really helps with that because it allows for a bit more of storage of energy and springing back into place, which assists with that. My question to you all right now, in the question, does it say anything about our patient having drop foot? anything about our patient having weak dorsiflexors that is causing them to trip or anything along the, those lines. No. All right. So it not only doesn't say that, but here's the deal. You never want to put a patient who, you know, doesn't have really good medial lateral ankle stability and something like a posterior leaf spring. I mean, I really would want our patient to have really good ankle stability before I put them into a posterior leaf spring. Because this specific orthotic doesn't help you at all with medial lateral stability. All right. It's not really a good uh, AFO for that purpose. And so what C, again, I don't like it. I feel like it doesn't really address my patient's impairments here. I'm going to go ahead and eliminate C. But let's go ahead and make sure D is the right answer. We don't know yet. D says articulated AFO with a posterior stop. Now let me slow up for a minute. Our patient has plantar flexor spasticity, we said with a 2 plus on the modified Ashworth scale. All right, we know that they have plantar flexor spasticity. The one thing I know very well is that with this hinged AFO with the posterior stop is that it stops plantar flexion. It keeps the patient from going into excessive plantar flexion. I love it already. Now, we, it also says that the patient has fair plus medial lateral ankle stability. Y'all see that right here, right? Now, here's the deal. The articulated AFO also has inherent stability in it. So it actually is going to protect the ankle from any type of medial lateral uh, instability anyway. So it's going to be providing some support. All right, so I like that piece, but here's the real kicker. If I have a patient who has plantar flexor spasticity that is still, you know, active, one of the things that I love about the hinged AFO is it allows for free dorsiflexion. So if the patient's trying to go up or down ramps, if they're trying to go up or down stairs or negotiate stairs in the home, if they're trying to do sit to stand, things like that, the hinged AFO doesn't block them from doing those activities. It allows them to stay active. And that is what I love about D, the articulated AFO with the posterior stop. I mean, it just fits. It fits every part of our patient's impairments, and it would be our best approach here. Final answer is D. Congratulations to those of you who got this question correct. If you didn't, listen, this type of issue, you know, this type of question that you can come across with these AFOs, a lot of times the reason why you would get it wrong is because you don't have KOF, knowledge of function. If you understand what these specific orthotics do and how they address a patient's impairments, it's easy to start eliminating them. Let's go back to it just really quick. The SAFO, 
we said that that was kind of like that block, right? That kind of locked up the ankle. Doesn't really allow for a lot of activity, but it locks up the ankle pretty well. So if you have a patient with really bad medial lateral ankle stability, that's an option for you. That's something that we're thinking about. If we look at B, it was the GRAFO, right? The GRAFO, I said that it stops your dorsiflexion, and it helps with patients who have knee buckling. All right, so if you have your patient coming in, they're having a lot of knee buckling, this is potentially an option for you. All right, the GRAFO. C, posterior leaf spring. Do you have your patient who has a drop foot? Do you have a patient that requires the storing of energy in the orthotic where it can spring back into place and help the patient with foot clearance? If that's what you're looking for, a posterior leaf spring may be your best option. But lastly, our final answer, the one that's correct, the hinged AFO, this can stop patients who have you know, excessive plantar flexion spasticity, but still allow for them to perform basic ADLs or activities such as negotiating stairs and so forth. All right.